chapter eight uh, mini lecture, I wanted to focus more on the second portion of the chapter, which is about reinforcing behavior. So the first section, and for to note, I wanted to point out is about human learning and two things um, that we've considered so far. The first is that learning can come from a single stimulus like habituation, which is essentially um, doing things out of pure habit over and over again, or learning that there's a predictable relationship between two stimuli. So classical conditioning or um, conditioning someone to feel a certain way or learn a certain thing. So the first uh, subsection is about living and learning, Thorndike's law of effect. So the vocabulary for this section, you have a puzzle box, which is a cage, a cage equipped with levers and latches so that an animal um, must open a door to escape. The second vocabulary term is a law of effect or the notion proposed by Thorndike that any behavior that results in a satisfactory outcome is more likely to occur in the future. And then you have behaviorism, which is the perspective that psychologists should study um, only observable behavior and not subjective mental events. So Th Thorndike was interested in how we learn, and he couldn't use humans in his graduate studies, so he used animals instead. So he used the puzzles boxes for studying. There was lots of trials and errors, and he concluded that animals solved puzzles by trial and error, moving randomly until something worked. Essentially, the learning process was a gradual and incremental instead of sudden and insightful, as he found. And then um, to explain the trial and error learning, it was the law of effect, or I think the definition's right up here. So yeah, so <clears throat> the way that he explained trial and error learning was through law of effect. The next subsection is about everyone likes being rewarded, which is very true. So the vocabulary, you have operant conditioning, which is also called instrumental learning. It's a form of associative learning that in which the likelihood that an act will be performed depends on the consequences that follow it. Then you have an operant condition, conditioning chamber, also called Skinner's boxes. So there are cages in which animals can learn to do a simple task, such as press a bar and obtain a reward. The reinforcer is a stimulus that appears in response to behavior and increases the probability of that behavior reoccurring. Shaping is the process by which a subject is readily provided with a reinforcer. And superstition is the false belief that a particular behavior will bring about a stimulus or event. So B.F. Skinner sought to standardize testing in order to vary conditions and see how they affect learning. And his subject's behavior operated on the environment and controlled what would happen next, which is operant conditioning. So oper operant conditioning chambers were Skinner's chambers or the boxes where subjects would obtain the reward. And the final subsection I want to note is reinforcement and punishment and how they can be positive or negative actually. So the vocabulary for this is pretty much explaining it all, but positive reinforcement is the addition of a stimulus following a behavior which increases the likelihood of that behavior. A negative reinforcement is the removal of a stimulus following a behavior which increases the likelihood of that behavior. And then positive punishment is the addition of a stimulus following a response decreasing the likelihood of a behavior which this can be exemplified by um, punishment for doing something wrong or spanking or something like that. And then negative punishment is the removal of a stimulus following a response, which decreases the likelihood of that behavior. And here I included the uh, table from page 323, um, figure 8.20, and it's about the stimulus type and the increase or decrease of behavior, whether pleasant or unpleasant aversive. And that's all I have for chapter 8.